Picture this. You have the opportunity to own a beautiful home in a historic neighborhood with deep cultural roots designed by some of the best urban planners in the world, all in a charming waterfront city. You'd want to live here, right? But what if I told you that this home was in an area of Baltimore called the Black Butterfly, where block after block of these beautiful historic row homes sit vacant and are negatively valued, meaning that the cost to repair each home is actually more than what the market says it's worth. Somehow the market must be broken, right? What's going on here? I've been studying the way housing markets work or don't work for the last decade. I started my career in investment finance on Wall Street, but when my hometown on the outskirts of New York City began to be gentrified, it pushed me into becoming a housing advocate. I learned more about the racist policies mandated um, by federal and local governments, like redlining and urban renewal, that gutted once thriving Black communities across the country. And prevented Black citizens from building wealth through home ownership. These communities typically face two trajectories. The first is a downward spiral, where political and financial disinvestment causes hypervacancy and decay that pushes people out of a neighborhood. Big banks see this exodus as confirmation that these neighborhoods are risky, defeated. Unredeemable, and so without investment, the cycle of distress continues. The second trajectory is gentrification, where developers are able to capitalize off of this distress by buying undervalued properties, pumping money into them without considering the needs or wants of legacy residents, and then renting or reselling them at much, much higher costs, causing displacement. So my question became. Can we do development without displacement? Is there another way? I quit my job on Wall Street and moved to Baltimore, the city that birthed redlining with a single suitcase to find out. My first inclination was to meet with investors and you know to raise funds for my idea, and I was literally laughed out of the room. They said that my idea was impossible, and that we would build homes that would sit empty for lack of demand. But I knew in my heart of hearts that that wasn't true. Unexpectedly, in that moment, being rejected by investors was the most important moment in my journey, because I realized that we didn't need big institutions to affirm the value of our communities. We'd affirm our own value through social capital. And so I started my nonprofit Parity, which creates upfront demand for homeownership opportunities in neighborhoods experiencing hyper vacancy, simply by tapping into existing social networks. What started as an idea from just one has grown into a collective movement of eight, then 19, and now 44 future homeowners, all through word of mouth. And we have a wait list of over. Thank you. Thank you. And we now have a wait list of over 100 people wanting to join our intentional community, like Yolanda, who's ready to buy a home to leave a legacy for her daughters, or Janae, a fourth-generation Baltimorean whose father. Vividly remembers the demolition of black homes to make way for a highway to nowhere. Iko, whose family left West Baltimore when he was just a baby, but now is coming back home to his origins to be part of the revitalization. And Medina, who like me came to Baltimore from New York to settle down and build a future. There are three key reasons why our work is transformational. The first is that we are leading the purchase and renovation of dozens of decades-long abandoned buildings, and we're selling them at deeply affordable price points. The second is that we not only support our home buyers to become credit qualified and mortgage approved, but we're creating the opportunity for folks to build deep social bonds and friendships with their future neighbors. 
And three, we're preventing the displacement of legacy residents by ensuring that they have the resources that they need to stay in their homes and transfer their wealth to the next generation. We're, we're healing the social fabric of the neighborhood as we're rebuilding the built environment. Contrary to the dominant narrative, there absolutely is demand for housing in historically Black neighborhoods devastated by racist policy. We've tapped into a hunger and appetite hiding in the blind spots of the traditional capital markets. Remember those folks that laughed me out of the room? Well, we have more, within just two years' time, we now have more demand for our homes than we have homes. We're sold out. And so can we do development without displacement? We absolutely can. Thank you.